Yutes Kislev, the 19th day of Kislev in the year 1798, which is exactly 210 years ago, was the day in which the Altarebbe, the author of the Tanya, was released from prison. And, and it's significant to note that 210 years is the exact number of years that the Jewish people spent in exile in Egypt. And therefore we must say that to a certain degree that this is also an ascension to the liberation of the Alter Rebbe. Starting from this year, there is an ascension, an elevation, an uplifting from the, the very element of freedom of the Alter Rebbe to a much, much higher level, being that it comes after 210 years, which is the same number of years that the people of Israel had entered into Egypt and ultimately left Egypt at the time of the Exodus. So the number 210 has that power of whatever limitation there was up until this point that there's going to be a release of this limitation. Part of the limitations of the study of Hasidus was the fact that Hasidic doctrine was recorded in Yiddish. Only later was it written down in Hebrew. And for many years it remained just for those who understood Hebrew and understood the secret codes, the difficult words that were Kabbalistic in nature. And only those who knew those words and understood their meaning were able to decipher the words of a Hasidic doctrine. Today the Hasidic doctrine has been spread far and wide and has been examined by people, some people who truly are interested in the study of the Hasidic doctrine, others who wish to impute their own ideas within the Hasidic doctrine. That's why one has to be careful which source does one quote. Uh, modern, so-called modernist, which is another word for secularists who wish to cast off their religion, they like to quote people like uh, Mr. like Professor Green, Arthur Green, and Louis Jacobs, who, even though they respect the writings, nonetheless also follow a certain pattern of accepting the, uh, the mo modernistic assumption that these doctrines, although that they are um, they are deep and inspiring nonetheless uh, are not really associated with reality more has to do with the uh, inspiration of the individual which one can use but really should not take too seriously in terms of religiosity uh, this is not what we Hasidim believe and the doctrine of Hasidus we see as the absolute truth of existence. Now what does Hasidus say that's different from all other doctrines? Number one, Hasidus promotes the idea that there is continuous creation of all elements in the world. The world wasn't created just once, the world is created continuously by the will of God. Because that is so, there must be divine providence at every moment for every little thing in the world. And that's hard to conceive of, hard to conceive of a, of a God who would have an intent in every little thing, such as how many times a leaf turns over in the wind and where it falls. But the Baal Shem Tov taught that in every single thing that happens in the world, every single thing there is divine providence and that there is this divine will and divine compassion that governs every aspect of the world. Now, of course, we see great tragedies such as what happened in Mumbai and we ask ourselves where is the divine providence? And of course, these are beyond our capacities to understand. Those who say that on the contrary, that by the death of these holy people, the message of Chassidus reached a far greater level and expanded far, far greater and was able to touch many, many more lives had they fulfilled their own lives. I find this argument uh, 
although very, very um, encouraging, I find this argument to be unconvincing. I cannot justify the death of colleagues that was so holy and precious or the death of any person. I cannot justify another man's death, and therefore these things remain mysterious to me. Nonetheless, the doctrine of Chassidus is to see the divine providence in every single thing that takes place. And we still as yet will see what the result of the tragedy in Mumbai would bring. I personally believe that this will bring for greater vigilance upon the Indian government and greater cooperation by the Pakistani government and that this will serve to more quickly eradicate Al-Qaeda. But, my friends, Al-Qaeda must be eradicated not just from their uh, bases. Al-Qaeda must be eradicated at the level of the madrasas and at the level of the spiritual teachings of Al-Qaeda. The true fight that exists out in the world is not the fight that is battled by guns it is the fight for men's minds. And realize that Islamic terror comes from Islamic indoctrination. And Islamic indoctrination could not exist without it being a closed society where no other opinion is allowed to enter. And therefore the battle against Islam must be like the battle against communism. Just as the nations of the world invested billions in Radio Free Europe in the broadcasts of truth into the then behind the Iron Curtain, so too we must invest billions to bring truth into the world of Islam. We must negate the falsehoods and the false promises that the Imams give in their madrasas and in their mosques. We have to negate their ideology because, you see, this is a battle for the soul of man, not just his body. And the only way to win is to speak truth. And I invite my Islamic friends to engage me in conversation, and engage me in a quest for truth because see this. The emergence of Chassidus is not just the liberation of a man or a movement, it is the liberation of truth.